cloud now. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Harker Road Adams channel here on YouTube. I am your host, Drew Hare. I'm with our analysts, Chris Adams and Matt Harker Road. Say hi, guys. Hello, guys. And we're here to talk about the 2020 NFL season. Uh, we are three quarters of the way. We are just entering week 14 of the 2020 NFL season. So what we want to do is to kind of chat about how things have gone the last couple of weeks and look forward to weeks 14 through 17 before we actually get to the playoffs. So, um, Chris, I, let's just go ahead and start with you. What have been your general thoughts over the last couple of weeks? Well, I mean, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't uh, just kind of check in and talk about how the, the league has uh, – been responding to to covid um it's it's been a little rough a little rougher in uh in in the in the past few weeks with the nfl than it was uh you know four four weeks ago when we were kind of really kind of remarking how uh what a good job the nfl was doing um and mm -hmm. i think the nfl is still doing a good job it's just you know we're seeing cases spiking all over the country so this was inevitable um but we've had you know games impacted you know we've had wednesday games and tuesday games and we had a team play without a quarterback um, and, and, and some other things. So I think, you know, the NFL is certainly not immune to this, uh, this pandemic. Um, but again, they still seem to be doing compared to like college football. Um, you know, they seem to be doing, I guess, as well of a, a job as, as any industry could be doing um, in this. Uh, so, um, you know, they haven't had to cancel any games, which is kind of remarkable if you think about that. Mm -hmm. um, but kind of turning onto the field, um, I think you're seeing kind of the tale of two leagues, right? Or two conferences. You've got the AFC, which is very, very top heavy, um, mm -hmm. but also very bottom heavy. Um, the AFC, if you look at it, has the uh, the only two teams in the league with one loss. Um, but then they also have likely the first, the top three picks in the draft um, <laughs> in their league. Whereas if you turn it over to the NFC, um, you know, you're going to have, you have maybe the worst division in NFL history, um, although it's been playing a little better as of late, which I think we'll, mm -hmm. we'll talk on more later. Um, but you really only have two teams in the, in the NFC that have far separated themselves from the others. And then you've got a huge, a huge chunk in the middle there. So just kind of how the, uh, the, the top heavy AFC versus the middle heavy NFC, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just talking about that, I mean, it's crazy to think that a week, uh, we're coming up on week 14 here. Um, and, you know, every team's played 12 games and uh, there's not a single team out of playoff contention in the NFC. Uh, and there's four teams eliminated already in the AFC. Uh, and that's just because how good the AFC is and how middle of the road the NFC is across the board, minus the, maybe the whole NFC uh, East for the first half of the season uh, with two teams looking definitely on the ups right now. Um, but um, yeah, if you look, I mean, the fact that, uh, that a team like um, Carolina or Atlanta can still make the playoffs as a wild card uh, is still kind of crazy when you think about, I mean, the best they can possibly do is eight and eight, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's not a team in the NFC or AFC that's going to get in with less than 10 wins. I don't think. Um, mm -hmm. So they're, I think if you crunch the numbers, there's likely a team that will get left out of 10 and six. Uh, and it just says, I mean, how many wins extra, um, you know, the, the AFC got from those four teams at the bottom and stole from the NFC. So as a, as a whole, you can say, okay, there's definitely more wins that have happened in the AFC, which is interesting. And on the COVID front, uh, as I just like to add that, uh, yeah, the, as a whole, the NFL community seems to be doing a pretty good job, but I would maybe put a caveat on the NFL as itself. Some of the rules and some of the ways they're willing to bend for certain teams and not others uh, is a little a little strange um, moving um, the, the Ravens game to a Tuesday. So Lamar Jackson could be healthy and or be past the COVID protocol um, and not doing anything to help um, Denver out when they lost all of their quarterbacks. And none of those guys were even COVID positive. Uh, well, one was right. So one was COVID one was, positive yeah. and the other, the other ones weren't, uh, and they didn't get any kind of leeway. And it's almost like the NFL is making an example out of them or punishing them in some way uh, because they didn't, they had a meeting without masks or something, you know, and then the Ravens have a strength and conditioning coach that refuses to wear a mask. And that's how everybody gets sick. And they didn't get any punitive punishment for that besides the players that were sick that had to sit out. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of weird uh, from that. I mean, I think that's always been the critique of Roger Goodell and his, um, you know, NFL is that 
there seems to be less of a rhyme and reason for the things he does and the things, the decisions they make. Um, it's no, there's no hard and fast rules and it just seems like punishments, you know, to, because of a whim or something. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, you know, and, and it's kind of crazy when you're really talking about health and safety that they're going to let, uh, you know, uh, a practice wide receiver go out there and play quarterback uh, over potentially, you know, and they're worried about safety, but nobody's worried about these players actually having to go out and do jobs they're not used to doing, but they're worried about, you know, somebody didn't wear a mask at a, a meeting and I'm saying everyone should wear a mask. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but you can't have it both ways and say we're protecting health and safety. And then also let a guy who's not thrown a pass in the NFL and was never intended to throw a pass in the NFL or probably get on a field in the NFL this year, uh, go out and play a starting quarterback with no practices under his belt. Um, mm-hmm. That's just, that's kind of the opposite of health and safety if you're really talking about it. So well, even just, well, even just the additional punishments, you know, Tennessee has been fined, Las, you know, Las Vegas has been fined. And I think even Vegas lost what a sixth or seventh round pick as well, you right. know, tied to, you know, participating in these events, maskless. I don't think I've heard anything and maybe something will come in, will come of Baltimore and, you know, over the next couple of weeks. But if, if something's been handed down, I haven't heard it. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's a, a crazy year. Just, continues to get crazier and you know we'll really have to see what's going to happen between 14 and 17 because i i don't think the nfl has passed you know i don't think we've seen our last game that's going to get moved to another day it's just yeah not I mean, likely yeah, yeah i mean I, well, think, I, I think all but one team has had covid outages besides it's seattle somehow managed to do no one mm-hmm. has been on COVID protocol, which is insane. And yeah. more power to them, whatever they've been doing. I think, I think the NFL actually probably went out and asked them because they keep changing the rules of what you're supposed to do. And mm-hmm. I, they just were like, all right, whatever you, Seattle's been doing has been working. <laughs> Everybody's doing that now. Because <laughs> yeah. every week it's like, okay, you can't do walkthroughs. You can't do this meeting. You can't have this one. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, my guess is they finally went out. Okay, what are you guys doing right? What are you doing? Mm-hmm. Well, this is going to be the first NFL season where they've had a game on every single day, like of, of yeah. the week this year, That's because cool. there's, there's going to be a Christmas Day, you know, Friday game in like yep. a couple of weeks. Yeah, with uh, with the man of the you know the man that met the legend Kirk Cousins uh, taking on the uh, the Saints. But let's just go uh, ahead and yeah, kind of, maybe They're, if they don't move, maybe game. right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and uh, as we continue just to talk about the review for not only the last couple of weeks, but also the season in general, let's just kind of talk about the pick review. Um, so both of you guys still have your, um, you know, your Super Bowl predictions. Uh, Matt, what was your Super Bowl prediction again? Yeah, I had Kansas City over a seven seed Seattle um, going in from uh, the last wild card um, with a, a Kansas City victory. So my two guys are still alive. Um, so that's good. Mm hmm. And Chris, what was your Super Bowl prediction? I had New Orleans over Kansas City, so I'm looking really strong right now. Very strong. Yep. Uh, as we kind of dive into the weeds a little bit, we'll talk about some of the actual, like the other division and um, wild card picks. Um, you know, Matt, obviously, I think that the the Jets one that you had um, on our preseason pick, that's uh, the one that kind of stands out and jumps out. Um, but that was already, I mean, that was always going to be out of, an out of left field. Like maybe they can come on. There's always like one team that way overperforms and, you know, you pick yeah. the, Well, the that's what they have become the Jets have become the most dysfunctional team I can I, I ever remember seeing, and I'm a Browns fan. Uh, so <laughs> last last year's Browns team was pretty dysfunctional, but this Jets team is something. Like uh, every week, it's something else. I mean, the the blitz and firing defensive coordinators, and like uh, I don't know if you saw these stats, but they re- they did the like NFL stats and info did a like a breakdown of that play, and they said mm-hmm. of all the plays the last 15 years where it was 40 yards with one play left in the game, no one has ever brought six rushers. Not one time has that ever <laughs> happened before the other day. Uh, and, uh, and it's crazy, too, when you think about it. It's like, oh, it's a game if the Jets, they lose. But the crazy implications of what happened in that game for mm-hmm. Las Vegas is crazy. I mean, they'd yeah. be on the outside almost looking yeah. in with little to no mm-hmm. chance to make the playoffs and they're still alive now um, because of whatever decided, you know, Greg Williams decided to do, or if he even was the guy who made the call, we'll never know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. yeah, I think the Jets know since they let him go. Yeah. So there's going to be some, there's going to be some, if the Raiders make the playoffs, there's going to be some fan base out there, whether it's, uh, you know, Baltimore or Indianapolis or, 
you know, Miami or somebody who's sitting out there at home and is just like, what the F, Greg Williams? Like, how did that happen? Do you think Las Vegas fan, uh, Raiders fans start like a GoFundMe for for Greg Williams? You know, like what <laughs> like what Buffalo fans did for Andy Dalton a couple of years ago. Uh, maybe they <laughs> should. But you know, it'll be the Browns' luck if it's the Browns that get uh, left out as uh, the people who passed over on Greg Williams. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Greg. Greg Williams already has like three or four jobs waiting for him right now. That's the NFL, him. right? Right. Yeah, especially in his mind. Um, Chris, I think you were pretty much chalk. I mean, I, I mean, I think uh, the only one that really jumped out would be like Houston, but obviously Houston's just been dealing with, you know, obviously you know, Bob yeah. getting fired and and Will and Fuller. Will Fuller now getting suspended and just injuries all over the place for them. And, it, you know, had I, and this is kind of my own fault for not doing the formal research, had I looked at Houston's opening schedule um, to open the season, I mm-hmm. probably would have not picked them to make the playoffs because that was just an insane <laughs> way to start the season. Because um, it was what, Chiefs, you, you, it was you Chiefs play, Ravens, Steelers, something like yeah, that? Yeah, like you have and to play kind of... everyone who's on your schedule and it, it evens out more or less, but like to mm-hmm. fall in a hole like that um is is hard to come to come back from so yeah but i think for the most part you guys i mean outside of you know everybody you know i think you guys both had dallas or philadelphia i mean obviously if dak is yeah. is healthy that's you know injuries are playing a part and you know philadelphia looks like they're falling you know falling apart in front of us right now so especially as they switch to, to jalen hurts going into this week yeah. so i mean not that really, not really yeah, nobody was i mean wait hold on. i mean we do have to say that matt P- matt picking the jets uh, to make the playoffs has turned into being one of the worst sports tw- takes of 2020 um, it's it's but... it's right up there <laughs> no no arguments about it um i really didn't think sam donald would be as bad as he is and mm-hmm. how dysfunctional his team is i well, mean yeah. i guess i should look i look should have looked at the coach uh, and uh, said, okay, yeah, this is probably not going to go well. But, uh, but I think, Matt, most, most people thought that the Jets would be around like the six and 10, seven and nine, eight and eight range. Like, like they were not right. tanking this year. Like, uh, you know, I think that's also a dysfunctional franchise and also a team that just woefully misevaluated its own talent, its own level of talent going into a season. So, right. Plus, you know, Adam Gase. It's just, yeah. And, 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 you know, he, I don't know what he has in the general. Isn't he like best friends with the general manager or something like that? There's always been something like a reason why he's being kept around much longer than he needed to be. But yeah, you know, we'll, at this point, we'll, though, how do you keep a general manager that hasn't kept any of his players that he's drafted besides Sam Darnold? Like, yeah. if you can't yeah. keep any, of, I mean, like you look at like Jacksonville right now. Like, they had so many good picks, and they've mm-hmm. they've got nothing to show for it. Yeah. Um, and they're not even going to end up with the number one pick in this draft. Yeah. Like, right. I mean, Justin Fields, I think, is going to be a great quarterback. But um, you're talking about making plans and them not coming through or not making plans at all. Like, either mm-hmm. way, if you made a plan for this and this is what you ended up with, then, wow, you're bad at planning. And if you didn't plan anything and this is where you ended up, like, maybe you should plan something. Yeah, I'm not sure <laughs> which is worse, actually. If you're yeah, there's no way to slice this that looks good. Like, yeah, well, like, the Jags got the, the Jags got that win that you know that that win week one, and you know have not won since, and it looks like it might bite them in the butt because that Jets team is bad. That Jets team is probably going out and succeed. Yeah. yeah, that Raiders game was as close as they were going to get, I think. Um, all right, well, let's go from talking about the Jets and the Jaguars to talk about uh, NFL MVPs. Um, <laughs> so this one I just have this game is called is it Mahomes, Rogers, or the field? So Chris. <laughs> Let's start with that. Let's go with you first. Do you think it's Mahomes or Rodgers? Or, you know, obviously you can throw out a, you know, a dark horse third party. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw out a dark horse here in a few. Um, but, like, it's going to be one of those two guys barring mm-hmm. an injury. Um, hard to pick between the two of them. Um, I, if I were a voter at this point, I would probably give it to Aaron Rodgers. Um, just because I think he's got less talent to work with than Mahomes does. Um, and just kind of the, you know, the MVP is always, is often always about the narrative. Um, and like, you know, you had the team like drafting Jordan Love and some people speculating um, if this is going to be Aaron Rodgers last year or, you know, has he turned into a game manager, which I thought was a little bit ridiculous. Um, you know, yeah, like Green Bay became a more balanced team last year, which they needed to right, developing a, a, a better running attack. But, you know, it was still always Aaron Rodgers team. So I think kind of the narrative is there. Um if I were a voter, I would probably vote for Aaron Rodgers with Mahomes a close second. Um, my dark horse, I'm um, throwing a name. He's, he's not going to win because his team sucks. We just talked about them a few minutes ago. But uh, Deshaun Watson is really having a great year if you look at it. He's mm-hmm. near the top in all of the passing numbers. 
And he also uh, gives you the threat with his legs to make some plays there. And I mean, he's been really the only reason that team has been washable this year. So mm -hmm. he's not going to get it, um, but he's having a really, really nice year. Hey, Matt, how yeah, about you? For, for me, uh, yeah, I mean, I think if you look at the numbers, um, I think you almost have to give it to Rodgers at this point. If the season was to stop today, I think you'd have to give it to Rodgers. Um, just slightly better numbers, to, especially when you get into like rating and things like that, you know, in the touchdowns to interception ratio. I mean, yes, Mahomes has thrown two picks. That's amazing. That's incredible. But, uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers has thrown a couple more touchdowns, I think. And, uh, you know, yardage is to Mahomes. But, yeah, I think to me, Aaron Rodgers looks like the guy who would win it right now. Um, you know, and I mean, I don't know what happened. I mean, Russell Wilson hasn't looked good, but his numbers are still really good. If he puts together a couple of games, he could get right back into that conversation. I just think he came out of the gate so fast that what he's done in the last, you know, five weeks or so um, has been lackluster comparatively to the other guys. But honestly, um, you know, he's right up there, right behind Patrick Mahomes, number two in yardage. Um, let's see, he's got, you know, a little lower on the touchdowns interception ratio, but again, you know, things can turn around. He's still got a 110 rating. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, it really comes down to the matchups and things like that. Uh, you know, I don't think there's a wide receiver or running back that's going to run away with this at this point. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, but, uh, you know, they've – maybe you could make a case if Dalvin Cook keeps scoring touchdowns at his ridiculous rate. Um, but at the same point, I mean, maybe Minnesota makes the playoffs. Maybe they don't. That doesn't help. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I just think, yeah. I mean, and with, can you get? Can they give like legally? Are they allowed to legally give the MVP to anyone besides a quarterback anymore? <laughs> if, they, if they are, not this NFL for sure. Yeah, Aaron Peters, Adrian Peterson, um, in like 2012, I think was the last. You see the last one. Right. I'm saying <laughs> if, it, good... if it is, it has to be a running back who gets yeah. 2,000 yards, yeah. and I don't think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So you know, I don't honestly. It's best quarterback league, and uh, Aaron Rodgers looks like that guy right now. Yeah, yeah I think so I saw this, the... um, comparing the two, um, so Mahomes has 31 touchdowns to two picks and a rating of 113.8. Rodgers has, um, oh, I was looking at it. where did it go? He has 12, 36 touchdowns and four picks um, with a rate with a rating of 118.5. So they're right neck yeah. and neck. Mahomes has the advantage on yards, but passing yards per game is uh, quickly becoming one of the most hollow stats um, mm -hmm. in, uh, in the NFL. So it's really hard to pick between two of those guys. I mean, if they, if they tied in the voting and they had a split, a joint MVP award, I'd be fine with that. Um, but like I said, I think I would give it to Rogers just because I think his supporting cast is a little, little bit beyond what Mahomes has. Yeah, I don't think it'll be a unanimous decision this yeah. year. No, yes. I don't think so either. Yeah, because, you know, you, you could see Devontae Adams maybe stealing a couple votes here and there away from him. I mean, and I don't think it's going to be enough to, like, sway the vote between the two of them. But, you know, I think I saw, you know, if Derrick Henry averages 177 yards a game for the next four games, he gets to 2,000, which would yeah, be right. – I mean, that's a huge number to average, but he could theoretically do that. Yeah. <laughs> We've possible, seen him before. Like yeah, I mean, like for him, it's like just the, the amount of the sheer amount of touchdowns, you know, he's, he's looking at. Uh, he's got 13 TDs. Derrick Henry's got 12, uh, but then he's got receiving touchdowns, too. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's I think that's the only way you get in there. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. The, wait, actually, you know what? I'm going to throw one possibility out there that completely slipped my mind. If mm -hmm. Travis Kelsey wins the receiving title. Do you have to give it to a tight end who leads the league in reception yards? Like that's kind of like has yeah. that ever happened before? Like you kind of almost have to think about it, right? Yeah, I think he would get some votes. Mm -hmm. And he's only like uh, what he's five yards behind DK Metcalf. So yeah, uh, yeah. So I mean, he's got twelve hundred yards, almost or eleven hundred yards receiving right now. So it's like mm -hmm. that one makes more sense maybe than anything. Yeah, yeah, that's. It's crazy. Yeah, some, yeah it's crazy. It 100, really almost a hundred yard average for a tight end. That's it's crazy. It's <laughs> gracious. All right, let's switch to the other side of the ball. Let's talk about defensive player of the year. Um, Matt, let's go first. Do you have a person in mind? Do you think it's you know is it yeah. T.J. Watt, Garrett? Is it you know is it Aaron Donald? Think, somebody else? Yeah, I think it's an honestly probably a three way horse race between those guys. Um, you know, pick your poison. Um, T.J. 
Watt leads on the league in like all the advanced stats uh, for, for rushing the quarterback. So my guess is, you know, if he can get the sacks number equal to, to miles and, you know, right. I think they're all tied right now. Or well, right now, TJ Watt's actually leading. He's got 12, Donald's got 11 and Garrett's got 10 and a half um, yeah. having missed two yeah. games. So. Right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I think it could be any of those things, but I mean, if you're going to, you know, ask me for a dark horse or who maybe deserves to, to do it. I mean, if you look at what's Xavier's doing down in Miami, like the mm-hmm. guy, the guy's got eight picks right now. And earlier in the season, we were thinking, Oh, it's so crazy. This guy in, uh, in new Orleans or new England has, you know, six and, and he didn't get any more. Uh, but Xavier Tower is like literally changing games uh, by mm-hmm. just the fact that they throw the ball towards him for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mm-hmm. know why they keep throwing the ball at this guy, but he's, you know, shutting people down on top of getting, you know, uh, picks stuff. So uh, if they give it to a, you know, a, a DB, which is the other position, I guess you're allowed to give, uh, you know, MVP awards to, or defensive player of the year awards to, um, mm. it, pri- but again, it's probably going to be a rusher. So I- I'll throw my hat in the ring with miles Garrett, having a couple of really good weeks uh, now that hopefully he's hundred percent healthy um, from his COVID stint. Yeah. You almost have to have a, like a Stefan Gilmore, like otherworldly type season to be, you know, a, a non-rusher to like get a D- DPOY. Chris, how about you? Um, I mean, I would like to say my, I mean, if Miles Garrett um, gets, you know, he had that run there where he had like three or four games with strip sacks um, in a row. If he, if he ends the season like that, he gets him back in. Um, I think right now, um, Aaron, Aaron Donald is probably the, the, again, if I, if I were betting, I'd probably go with him, but um I mean, TJ Watt's numbers are really good too. So, yeah, I think I saw. I think I saw in the betting odds like TJ Watt had just like a slight lead over Donald. But yeah, it's gonna be between those three probably. Yeah. Um, man, and speaking of just all over the board, um, rookie of the year. Like, I have no clue. Like, I truly, honestly, have no idea. We. we... Yeah, I mean, the Joe Burrow injury um, kind of threw that into a uh, uh, in, into chaos. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, Justin Herbert has 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 gaudy statistics not gaudy but like really good statistics for a rookie um but he was pretty awful in his last last game um About the last month yeah. last month yeah i think teams have started to figure him out so if he like kind of falls back to earth um or if he continues on this look downward trajectory during the back half of the season mm-hmm. that takes him out um i mean i think then you got to look at again this is actually matt i think this is a position where you're allowed to give it to a non-quarterback um yeah but I think you've got, you got to look at James Robinson in Jacksonville, who's quietly putting up a ton of numbers, at least a ton mm-hmm. of rushing yards. And then uh, Justin Jefferson in, uh, um, in Minnesota, who's quickly, um, you know, they don't miss Stephon Diggs at all there. Um, and with that team on the rise, um, he's really having just a, a really good year. He's been taken over as that deep threat. Yeah, that, yeah. That, Jefferson, that Jefferson for Diggs trade, I mean, the way they ended up, I mean, that worked yeah. out well for both teams. For both teams, for, yeah. Yeah, for what Diggs has been able to bring to Buffalo, and, you know, Jefferson's going to be yeah. you know, their wide receiver for the future. But Matt, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, no go ahead. Um, yeah, it's – I mean, it looked like a little while it was going to be Clyde Edwards-Alaire's to, to lose. Like, he was having really good games and really big moments. Um, but they kind of have been stopped. I don't know if that offensive line – um, it's just not blocking as well, or they figured out the run scheme that they're using with Clyde, but, uh, it's not been great. Yeah. I think if you look at it, you know, I mean, they give it to quarterbacks a lot, but I don't think there's a quarterback out there that's doing anything amazing. It's not going to be Tua. It's not going to be mm-hmm. Burrow at this point, I don't think. Um, and then, so it's Herbert, if he has a couple of good games, puts them together, maybe. Um, and you know, they always end up voting for quarterbacks for this anyway, but I, I, honestly, to me, Justin Jefferson's the best player it, that came out of this draft on the field. Uh, mm-hmm. If you look at what he does, like he is now the number one. I know that Adam Thielen, they're saying, you know, he's, you know, his number one target, Kirk Cousins target, if you see it, but God, man, every big minute, it seems like it's mm-hmm. just Jefferson that's throwing the ball to you. So, I mean, for a rookie to get the kind of uh, respect and, um, you know, uh, trust that he's getting out of his team is just incredible. And, is Honestly, it, would it be, they can't give it to a guy in Jacksonville, right? They can't. <laughs> would, it be cra- would it be crazy for an offensive lineman to be uh, offensive rookie of the year? I mean, you've got all the, I mean, there are all those tackles this year and between Jedrick Wills, Tristan Wirth, Mackay Becton, they're all playing really, really well. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is crazy. 
<laughs> not in this NFL. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's 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 gonna be one. Yeah, it's gonna I be for those like, it. yeah, it's gonna be for like the, those who like really watch. Just they see the impact of those offensive tackles and and stuff like that. But yeah, it's gonna be the quarterback probably or you know running back wide receiver. But yeah, James Robinson's handling like ninety six percent of all the running back touches in Jacksonville. It's an insane amount. Yeah. And yeah, it's yeah, it, it's been kind of crazy. It, it, I think you're right. I think if Herbert has a good end to the season. Even if he has a decent ending, that's probably going to be enough, unless like you know Jefferson. But if yeah, but like he has not been very good the last couple. No, weeks, he so has not. If he continues yeah. on that, that's that stretch. Mm-hmm. Well, and that might tie us into you know coaches uh, on the hot seat. You know, coaches. We've had a couple of coaches fired, obviously, since we talked. We had Matt Patricia um, uh, fired by the fired by the Lions, but you know Anthony Lynn's probably going to be on the hot seat too, maybe because they just looked out coached, yeah. out prepared, and pretty much across. Um, what do you guys think is going to be next? Is it going to be you know Duck Malone, well, I mean, Adam Gates, or I think we're going to assume Adam Gates is gone after this season. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's uh, that's a given. Um, Honestly, I don't know if if Jacksonville fires Doug Marone. I don't think he's done a horrible job um, uh, with a team that is just severely lacking in talent. Um, Mm -hmm. And I don't think he's a bad coach. I don't think he's a great coach, but he's a competent coach. Um, So it's just going to decide what they want, what they want to do in Jacksonville. They just want to start fresh. Um, And, you know, I mentioned it before in our last video, and I know Mike Brown doesn't like to make changes um, because he doesn't like to pay uh, people who aren't coaching, but, I think mm-hmm. Zach Taylor should be on the hot seat in Cincinnati just for the the, the way, um, you know, he put Joe Burrow in harm's way, um, throwing him out there behind a bad offensive line, which that's, you know, they're, they're a bad team. They're, they're going to have holes and that's not on, on Taylor. That's on the, the GM, but um, mm-hmm. just having him drop back 50, 60 times a game and doing seven step drops, um, especially when they have Joe Mixon on the team. Um mm-hmm. And just putting him out there, like, you know, as everyone who's watched watched the Bengals play earlier this year, sadly, it wasn't it wasn't a question of with with Burrow, it was when, you know, mm. he was was going to go down, and it happened, uh, yeah. unfortunately. So I think he should be. I don't know if Zach Taylor is going to be on the hot seat, but he should be. Yeah, I think with the Zach Taylor situation, it's not just I mean, yeah. I mean, you can have holes and have bad players on your team, but you know, when you're getting reports from inside and outside of the organization about how, you know, the people on, you know, in the, in that locker room don't respect his decisions. They feel like, you know, he's, he's big playing favorites or something. I I don't know how you can get a a locker room back after that. And so to me, Mm -hmm. you know, I know we talk of like, you know, the talk of culture or whatever is kind of overblown in the NFL. I mean, these are professional athletes. Um, they're out there to play. They want to make their money. They want to get their bonuses and everything. But at the same time, if you've got a guy you can't trust coaching you, um, or, or at least, you know, I, I mean, I think the same thing kind of happened to Patricia. I mean, people openly mm-hmm. celebrating his firing, you know, his players, some of the players openly celebrating his firing, mm-hmm. um, you know, because he was so, you know, weird with what he wanted to do and thought he was, you know, changing all the, the, the game and how you practice and everything else. And mm-hmm. it didn't work. Um, and I think you know, what Taylor's doing is even worse, uh, you know? So uh, yeah, I, I'm with Adams. If I'm firing a guy, he's the first guy I fire that's left in the, in the, you know, in the league, Anthony Lynn probably is going to get fired just because you want, oh. you think things should be better. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I'm with Chris on Doug Marone. I, I feel like, when you know your team's going to be bad again, like just keep the coach you have and then switch when things start to go the right way. And then you need help to get up the next hill. Um, Cause you don't want a guy that's going to come in there his first year and then win one game. Like it's just not good for anybody. Yeah. Change the organization the year after. And, and Jacksonville is just a, a bad team with little, t- with little to no talent. They're not, you know, a, train wreck like the jets like some it's of the other fight teams. yeah so, Jacksonville yeah, there's no infighting there's no like stories of poor culture or or that there's just a team that doesn't have a lot of talent and they yeah. fight hard they've had a lot of yeah those last two weeks against losses. you know browns two weeks ago yeah. and then Minnesota, taking minnesota overtime yeah. last week absolutely they the fight packers, for, they um, push the packers yeah you're right mm-hmm. yeah i wonder if what do you guys think about matt and Aggie in chicago I, we were talking i think he's fine I think he's fine um, six straight i mean that he was supposed to be this offensive genius coming you know from kansas city and it's the only reason that, think, 
he might get fired to me is if if you really think that he mismanaged his quarterback selection and how this all went, if he should have went into the season, you know, with his number one guy being clear and not, I mean, I, I guess that's always a coach's like the problem you have as a coach when you have two quarterbacks that are about the same, like you go in and say, this is my guy. I'm not going to change it. Okay. Or do you say these guys are fighting it out every week. We're going to decide every week, but ultimately you've got to pick one because they can only get so many snaps in practice. Right. And so that's kind of going to indicate what you're doing on the inside. But I, I kind of feel like you never knew who was going to start every single week, which is the exact opposite of situation that you've got with Peterson, who might be another guy on the outs in Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, now we, just sticking with his guy for as long as he can be as awful as he has been. Um, so it's kind of like it's you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you can always, the head coach is the blame if it doesn't work. Right. So um, mm -hmm. in either case, I think you can let them go for their quarterback decisions, but just different, different versions of the same problem. I don't know. I think, I think Nagy's fine for the, I think he's safe this year. I think he might begin next season on, you know, as as you know someone who needs to deliver to, to keep his job but i think this season would probably be a little premature um unlike unless matt said unless we find out some really you know horrible the, the whole quarterback thing was just a complete mismanagement and i'm not sure like mm. yeah that's yeah. right i mean i mean guys i think we have an idea of the, this we're probably gonna end up with about six at least six openings um, Greg Williams will be the number one of course on everybody's <laughs> list. Um, but I mean, that could be easily seven or eight. Just, we, we don't know how these yeah. teams are going to end up in the next couple of weeks. So that's gonna be really interesting, especially as we well, look forward. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, was that, looking at Atlanta, I mean, they've showed some life. Maybe they keep Raheem Morris. Um, yeah, you might bring mm -hmm. They've been fighting. I mean, they've been yeah. really, really good defensively, they, even though just, you know, anytime Julio's out, Matt, Matt Ryan just looks like a shell of himself too. So they might be in a little bit of transition yeah. as well. But as we kind of look forward to the next couple of weeks, um, Matt, we're going to start with you. Um, what's your, uh, you know, what's you know on your list of what to watch week 14 to 17 edition? Yeah. I mean, as we talked about it, I mean, these, these races for the last, uh, the last or the wild card spots at all. And even division leads are tight and uh, even both divisions, even though like the one is better class of teams, it looks like than the other, but, there's so many good games coming up on the schedule that's going to decide, decide the season. So I kind of went through it like what, like uh, kind of help you put together what, what should I watch at each hour, uh, you know, each football <laughs> block here. So um, tomorrow, I mean, on Sunday, you've got uh, Vikes and Bucks. We'll ignore the Thursday night game. There's no reason to watch that this week. Um, Colts, Las Vegas at four. That's going to be, I mean, the winner of that, or the loser of that is going to be really close to eliminated, especially if it's Las Vegas. Um, and, and Indianapolis just doesn't have any tie breaks with anybody. So uh, unfortunately for them, uh, it's a must win for both of those teams. Um, then you got Pittsburgh, Buffalo uh, could be huge, especially, I mean, if Pittsburgh looks like they did last week and Buffalo can take that win, that changes everything in the AFC makes Kansas city, the, the, you know, the leader in the house for the, uh, uh, the clubhouse for the for the bye week, so that's huge. Ravens, uh, so that's eight o'clock. So every hour, every big game on Sunday is going to be good. Um, Ravens, Browns on Monday night. Um, Browns win that. The Ravens are all but eliminated from the playoffs. I mean, sure they can still get in uh, with the rest of their schedules being as weak as it is, but it's going to be really tight uh, to get in if you can't get to ten wins or, or eleven wins, and they wouldn't be able to if they lose that game. Uh, Browns would still have a shot, I think. That they're they're the closest in the AFC to having a lock right now, uh, but they have a really tough schedule ahead of them. Mm -hmm. uh, then you've got uh, two games in the uh, one o'clock hour the next week, week 15 to watch uh, Pat's Dolphins. Um, could, could the Pats keep putting it together, push the Dolphins a little bit. If Dolphins get a win there and Buffalo happens to lose to Pittsburgh the week before they're pushing them then for the mm -hmm. lead. Uh, in that division. So that's real interesting. Um, then you got Seahawks and Washington. Washington is looking as hot as any team in the league right now. Um, nobody wants to play Washington in the playoffs. I guarantee it uh, because that defense is good. Um, you know, their offense with Alex Smith has been competent enough and they've got enough weapons. So uh, that should be a good game. The four o'clock game, you got Chiefs and Saints. Um, and then yeah. fortunately, which is going to be just amazing because Again, the Chiefs can't afford to lose. New Orleans probably can afford to lose a game, but obviously they're not mm -hmm. going to want to. Um, 
But so that's going to be an amazing showdown at four o'clock. Mm-hmm. And then the NFL chose to flex the Browns Giants game to the yeah. eight o'clock spot uh, instead of that Chiefs Saints game, which is crazy. I don't know if Fox was like, no, 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 you're taking that one from us. Yeah. Uh, but I think they CBS, get one right CBS refused well, to aren't, do it. Aren't the four o'clock games locked in and they can only flex from the, uh, the one o'clock games? I think they get one right of refusal per week. Like, so they can say that, no, you're not taking this game wherever it's scheduled. Um, I think that's how it works. I'm pretty sure. Unless you've only got one on your block, then you kind of have to leave with something. But they can flex other games around too. So I don't know. But either way, uh, so, so the Browns Giants, uh, huge for both teams, especially if the Browns lose to the Ravens on this Monday night. Um, uh, they're going to need to get a win other than the Jets, uh, what they'll have the week afterwards. So um, you know, interesting how that'll all shake out. So definitely stay up late and get the popcorn ready for the eight o'clock Sunday game, both weeks, two weeks in a row. Um, then, uh, so we got the weird schedule for the Christmas holiday, uh, Friday night, we've got Vikes and saints, uh, Vikes could still be fighting for a playoff spot. They will absolutely need to win this game against the saints to probably get in. Um, so it could be really hot if like continue to be looking pretty well, like, uh, so, you know, We'll see. Saturday, uh, we've got a Dolphins versus Las Vegas game. Another must win for both of these teams, probably at this point, Um, especially if Las Vegas is, you know, still kind of muddling around and they lose that game to the Colts in week this week coming up Um, could be really interesting. Uh, Then on Sunday, it's just insane. So you've got Colts Steelers, which is going to be a must win for the Colts. Absolutely. Maybe Mm -hmm. a must win for the Steelers to keep their spot uh, if they're still in the number one spot. Uh, you got Giants, Ravens, uh, again, I, two must-win games by both of those teams, probably. Um, four o'clock, you've got Rams uh, versus Seahawks for the division lead in the West. Uh, eight o'clock, uh, you've got the uh, Titans versus the Packers. Uh, Titans probably that. maybe in a must-win. The Packers trying to steal that spot from New Orleans uh, for mm-hmm. the top seed. Um, so, and then uh, Bills, Pats on Monday night, again, could be – the Pats fighting for their last chance at a playoff spot. They're on the outside, very outside looking in, but anything's possible. Um, and it's, it'll be interesting to see if that mantle finally gets passed for the AFC East. Uh, and then the last week of the season where there's not a whole lot of great games. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you've got Brown Steelers, which could be good. Um, mm. But uh, who knows where if Steelers will be even playing their starters at that point, or if the Browns will be, uh, if they're locked into that five spot uh, and then uh, Dolphins bills could, could be good. Uh, but then yeah. the rest of the matchups that week, they're just not a whole lot. I mean, it's just rivalry weeks and there's not any big rivalry games that matter at this point. I don't think actually, Matt, I might throw in on that Brown Steelers. I could see a scenario where it's the Browns who are resting their starters because if yeah. Pitt, because if Pittsburgh and Kansas city are locked in that battle for the number one spot and say the Browns are locked in at the, at the five spots, that could be, you know, we could see Case Keenum going up against Ben Roethlisberger, um, which would just be, I think, hilarious. Um, but it also could be, on the other side of that, a battle for first place in the AFC North. It with could, the Browns, exactly, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. That so. point. And, uh, you know, Pittsburgh strumbles against Baltimore, or I mean, Buffalo and somebody else. I mean, yeah. they did not look great this past week. So no. that one could be great, but more than likely, it's yeah. going to be a game where have everybody sit. Yeah. <laughs> so... There's your rundown of what to watch if you're looking to watch football. Matt, appreciate it. Chris, uh, how about your insights? We need some insights from you over the next couple of weeks. What are you, yeah, what you so looking for? Yeah, so much, but just some kind of an, an observation this year. Um, and maybe this is from being like a Browns fan and watching bad football for so many years and now actually watching my team play good, competent to good football. <laughs> um, and just – it just really makes me appreciate like Kevin Stefanski and just the little things that go into good teams. Right. Um, you know, it's not, it's not, I, I think one of the most overrated stats in, in the league might be point differential, honestly, um, because uh, yeah, there are some blowouts. Um, you know, there are some blowout games that actually are a lot closer than, than the final scoreboard looks. Um, Cause you, or you have like, we're one play and then things kind of like a key turnover and things, things springboard from there and then you've got like Mm -hmm. games like the browns titans this past week where the final score looks a lot closer than the game actually was um 
And it's just like good teams find ways to win the close games and bad teams find ways to lose the close games, right? Mm -hmm. Like you look at a team like the Jets 0-16 or like when the Browns went 0-16 in 2007, 2017 or when the Lions did it and just some of the other really bad teams out there. You know, yes, they'll have their games where they're, where they're just completely outclassed in terms of talent and get blown out. But there's also a lot of games in there where, you know, winnable games that are close and then the, the team just makes – mistakes uh at, at the at the end of the game so that's kind of something that i i, I started to look at and kind of determine who you know i i like in the playoffs and it's just the teams that can find ways to make plays when they need to in the game and sometimes sometimes it's an it's an amazing you know less you know nick chubb takes a uh, a screen pass on third and 12 and and, and bust for 14 yards but sometimes it's just you know a receiver runs a you know, an eight yard pattern on third and five and holds on to a, a tough ball and picks it up or a running back gets that first yard and stays in bounds to run the clock, to run, run the clock at, at the end of the game. So like, mm. you know, how teams perform in close games in the NFL uh, is a, um, is I think kind of an underrated aspect of the sport. And I think a lot of people um, who just maybe watch college football more than the pros don't really pick up on that. You know, they, they expect the good teams to win by 30 every game. Um, and that's not, that's the NFL is a different game. Mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome. For sure. But I, I don't think there's ever been a team, uh, with as low of a plus minus as the Browns have right now and being nine, three, that's just but, a crazy, yep. but, at the, but at the same thing, like I would much rather be a team that, that gets blown out twice early in the season, um, and wins a bunch of close games than a team that like never gets blown out, but loses every game by three points and is like you know, five and uh, five and seven right now. Yeah, but if you blow out teams, you don't have a chance to get uh, lose close ones too. There's so no I, style I mean, points in the NFL time. though, Matt. It no, count, every no. win counts the same. Every loss counts the same. That is true. I agree with you. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's really strange that the Browns happen to have a negative plus minus that's as low as it is, negative 20 or whatever it is right now. Um, it's just in, minus like, 15, negative 15. Sure. Point, they do play the Jets, though, in a couple weeks. So maybe that changes. Maybe we, maybe we could finally get over that. That uh, <laughs> I, Like, I, if it's possible, like, mathematically, <laughs> that they could, you know, win 12 or 13 games, uh, you know, and uh, still have a negative plus minus, which is just baffling, really. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're going to get their chance to get, you know, those Steelers and Ravens games have just completely skewed those plus minus numbers right. from the very yeah. beginning. And so they're going to get their chance to, to make up against both those teams coming forward. Um, as we kind of shift gears to finish up, um, let's talk about picks for the playoffs. Do you guys just want to go through each of the divisions and talk about your picks there? Or you guys just have like more of a focus on teams to watch for? How you guys want to do it? Uh, let's do let's just do rapid fire. You give us yeah. a division, and then we'll go through the we'll we'll spend a little more time on the wild cards. Yeah. Sounds good to me. All right, let's go ahead and start in the AFC, um, AFC East. Who are you guys taking Buffalo. right now? It's, you can take Buffalo, Buffalo nine as well. Okay, um, AFC South. This is the tough one. Tennessee and Indianapolis the, both eight and four at this point. I'm going to take the Titans. I'm going to take Tennessee as well because I believe in Ryan Tannehill more than I believe in Philip Rivers. Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry more than Philip Rivers and who's ever running the ball for the Colts. Mm -hmm. I think fair, fair. Um, AFC West, I think everybody has a everybody knows who that one's going to be. Yeah. So uh, AFC North, you guys going to stick with the Steelers? You guys are actually going to yeah. make the switch? I'm stick with the Steelers. I'll stick with the Steelers. Okay. And your three wildcard teams beyond that, Chris. Okay. So I'm going to go, um, I think the Browns um, are going to, going to be one. I, I picked them from the beginning and I not, I'm not certainly not turning off on them now. Um, I, I looked at the schedules today and I'm going to say the Ravens. Um, yeah. Get in it just because I know it's, it's fashionable to, to, to hate on the Ravens right now. And they have not looked good in the last few games. The Mar has looked out of sorts, but you know, they showed last night, I know they were playing Dallas, but again, they did what a good team does. They beat a bad team. And their mm -hmm. schedule is very favorable down the stretch. Yeah. Um, I don't think they can, especially if Cleveland beats them this week, I, they might not catch Cleveland for the number two spot in the division, but I think they can get into the playoffs. Um, and then kind of the last spot, um, I've gone back and forth on this, um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the Colts because um, their okay. defense is really good um, and they can get enough out of Phillip Rivers here and there. 
Um, Miami has an absolutely brutal schedule. Um, and I think their talent deficiencies will, 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 uh, will show through despite the fact that they've had a really nice season. Um, and the Raiders, I think they just peaked too soon um, with beating the Chiefs and beating Cleveland earlier in the season. Um, mm-hmm. And they're just kind of struggling now. All right, Matt, how about you? What are your three? Yeah, I'll, for the I'll, I'll kind of echo what, uh, what Chris said. Um, you know, I, Cleveland, I think, is probably going to be in it. There would be, have to be a lot of weird stuff that would go on for them not to get in. Um, and these teams, a bunch of these teams are playing each other multiple mm-hmm. times even. Um, yeah. And I kind of agree with them. Miami's just schedule is just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. They, they can't, like, if they managed to get in, they're the scariest team in the, in the AFC because <laughs> they would have beat half of these damn teams. Yeah. Then, right? Like, so, um, mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah. I, unfortunately, you know, the Ravens are just, the seven and five is scary because it's like, two mistakes and you're out of the playoffs. Like you're not getting in at nine with nine wins. Right. So if they, mm. and the Browns are a good team and so are the giants. So, um, so I don't know. So I'll go, I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to hate myself for this, but I'm going to go new England gets in at that seven spot, Cleveland wow. and Indianapolis. That's what I'm going to put on just because I think the Patriots are kind of coming on right now. Um, kind of feel the way too. And they have the best coach in the game. And I just think that there's too many possibilities for the Ravens to slip up. And uh, if they do once, even it might be enough to keep them out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. New England's got to come, you know, New England's only a game behind the Ravens right now, but man, it's just, it's just a lot of teams in that eight and four to six and six range. That, yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, if Bill Belichick, Bill Belichick and the, and the Patriots pulled that out, it would not surprise me. But now I'm just, you know, as a Steelers fan now, just expecting the, the Steelers to end up like maybe like 13 and three and have to play the Ravens um, in the first round of the playoffs because the, the Chiefs win 14 and two and they're the ones that get the bye. So that would be that'd be a perfect, perfect for uh, oh, nightmares. A likely um, scenario, too. Yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? All right. Let's switch over to the NFC. Um, NFC West. Who you guys got? I'm going to take the Rams. I'm also going to take the Rams. This is a tough one. Um, mm-hmm. Like you know, earlier this season, we were talking about is the NFC West the best division in football? Um, and I think depends on how you define best. I think it's the best in that there's not a bad team in that division. Um, mm-hmm. But right now, I'm not sure there's a great team there. Um, and I'm going to go with the Rams because they have kind of been under the radar a lot this year, whereas teams like Seattle, uh the cardinals have been kind of san francisco they've been kind of hot and cold the rams have just kind of been playing i think they're always going to play at a a certain solid level and then if jared when jared goff is good they can play with anybody um he's he's inconsistent but when he's good um they can play with anybody and when he's bad they're still pretty solid so i'm going to take the rams because that defense is always good yeah they just really are okay uh saints for the nfc south do we have to you guys don't think they already clinched Oh, no, they clinched a spot. Oh, I guess they could possibly clinch uh, this week. But, okay. Um, oh, okay, yeah. I thought, yeah, yeah. you're right. You're right. Yeah, it's, it's close. Yeah, they're, they're close. Um, NFC North, Packers? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we saved the best for last, uh, NFC East. Why don't you go, Matt? Man, this is a tough <laughs> call. Uh, this is a really tough call because – It's actually legitimately tough at this point. Yeah. Between those I two think, teams. Honestly, I think New York's the better team. Like, I think that mm-hmm. they're better uh, – on both sides of the ball than, than Washington is, but man, their schedule is rough. Like they got to go mm. through, they got to, they got to play the Ravens and the Browns. Um, I just, I mean, fortunately for them, they do have the tie break with Washington cause they beat them twice. Uh, but yeah, they've got the Cardinals as well in this mix. Like mm-hmm. there's not a win besides maybe the Cowboys if they've given up at the last game of the season. So I'm going to take, Washington just because of that like I just can't see the Giants winning out uh, although mm-hmm. they could I think they're talented enough to do so I just don't see it and I feel like Washington I mean they've got the Seahawks but they've got Panthers Eagles and 49ers and those are winnable games mm-hmm. uh, yeah I'm gonna take Washington all right Chris how about you I am also gonna take Washington but actually for okay. a different reason than Matt um, I just think okay. they're better than the Giants um, mm-hmm. I mean you look at them they did lose yeah. to him twice, though. <laughs> right now, right now, though, right. right you, you what if was two weeks ago? <laughs> let me. Well, let, let, let me. Let me. Let me point out. Just, All I right. think Ron Rivera is the best coach in that division. 
I think Alex Smith right now, in addition to being the best story in the league, which and maybe we should have talked about this at the beginning as the opening, um, just the fact that he's back and playing is awesome. But he's an experienced quarterback. He's been he's been there. Um, he's been to the playoffs. I think um, you know the defense has Chase Young and all those first rounders. Antonio Gibson has turned into a pretty solid running back and Terry McLaurin is an upper tier wide receiver. And, you know, I appreciate the giants, what the kind of the, kind of the little run they're on right now, but I look at the roster and I'm like, how? So no, I don't think the Gi- I think the giants are playing well, but I don't think that, I think they are a less talented team than Washington. So I'm going to take Washington. I know they beat them twice. I, I, I get that things are weird in the NFL, but I'm going to take Washington because I think they're the better team and the better coach. That's fair. I mean, it was a combined four points. Yeah, it's <laughs> uh, every those two games. So yeah, it's not crazy, and it, it was a little more than two weeks ago. So uh, I, I give you a pass. I kind of agree that their their roster is a little better, especially if Alex Smith's playing well, um, and he is playing well right now. Um, because mm-hmm. the, who knows when Daniel Jones comes back um, in, in uh, New York? Uh, but yeah, it could be. I mean, one of those teams could be a wild card. Strangely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, Chris, did you know that uh, Washington actually has a better point differential than the Browns? <laughs> See, that's that, that's really everything four. you need to know right there. Like Washington is plus four. Like that's insane. <laughs> uh, all right, well let's but talk about find, those. They find way, They found ways to lose in a number of games mm-hmm. this year. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, uh, Chris, your three NFC wildcard teams are. Yeah, this is tough. Um, so um, I think one is Seattle. Um, despite mm-hmm. the, the rocky patch they've hit right now, they, they built up such a, a, an early lead for themselves. And look, they still have Russ Wilson. They're going to figure it out. Um, I think, I don't think they, be, they beat out the Rams, but, um, they, they, they're in one of the playoffs, playoff spots. Um, the second is Tampa Bay. Um, mm-hmm. you know, again, they've been up and down, but you know, it's still Brady, you know, Brady, uh, Matt and I were kind of talking offline earlier this week, you know, about what is Tom Brady? Is he, is he over the hill? Is where is he? And I think he, he's still a good quarterback right now, a good mm-hmm. an above average to good quarterback um, who I, I, at, on, at times can, can dial it, can dial up, up, up the old Brady magic. And there's a lot of talent on that team. So I think mm-hmm. they get in. And then the third um, I'm going to go with the Minnesota Vikings, um, you know, consistently under Zimmer, they've been a second half team um, and they're doing it again this year. Um, they're playing well cousins, you know, you all, you're every year you're ready to write off Kirk Cousins. everybody, but Matt is ready to write off Kirk cousins <laughs> about like the, the quarter pole of the season. And mm-hmm. then he turns it on in the back half. Um, and he's playing really well. And, you know, Dalvin and Jefferson, um, are, are yeah. playing great there on, on the offense. So I think Minnesota gets sneaks in at the, uh, the, um, the seventh spot. Definitely see that, especially with Arizona falling off. I mean, Kyler does not look healthy, and I feel like they're like really the only other like big competition that the Vikings might have. Um, Chris, uh, Matt, how about you? What are your three? Yeah, this is really tough because all these teams play each other again. This is like mm-hmm. a great scheduling miracle that they have right now. Is that like that? I think if you look at the, the teams that are in that, besides the Seahawks, maybe, um, but like Tampa Bay, Minnesota, Arizona. Uh, and Washington, they're all playing. Like they're all in New York, they're all playing. Mm-hmm. Like, so it's going to be great football down the stretch. Um, so mm-hmm. for me, I mean, I think Seattle's going to be in. I think if the season, like, and they don't win another game, they could still be in. And I think they'll probably win a couple. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, Tampa Bay just has a win victory over everybody. And I think that might be enough, but they've got to play Atlanta twice still, which is not, mm-hmm. those aren't give me wins. Like, um, you know, even though they're, not great record wise they're playing a lot better ball um but yes i'll go tampa bay and then for the last one man i almost want to say like uh new york gets the other one um but god it's gonna be tough um you know i'm I'm gonna go with it i'm gonna go new york gets that last spot i think the viking schedule is ridiculous cardinals i agree are falling apart uh i don't see san francisco putting it together and so if if you know, both of these teams, they don't play each other in New York and Washington and they both can win Mm -hmm. three games. They might get in like that might be enough. Uh, So um, yeah, I guess I'll go that even as crazy as it sounds. Well, I mean, that would be perfect for 2020. We, we shit on the NFC East for the first three months of the year. And all of a sudden they potentially get two wild cards or, you know, two teams in that would, that that just feels right. That feels 2020. Yeah, I mean, they're only one game behind 
They're only one game out. Like it's yeah. not possible to make that up, you know? Yeah. Their defense has just looked awesome. And, and that's just, it just boggles my, especially with, you know, whether it's Colt McCoy or Daniel Jones and it's yeah. Yeah. Defense does win championships and it looks like it might win the NFC East too. Um, as we kind of shift gears into final thoughts, um, you know, we've talked about a lot of teams, a lot of players, a lot of situations. Um, anything that you guys, you know, think is going to really define the next, you know, couple of weeks as we kind of finish out the season. Uh, yeah, I think, oh, go ahead, Chris. So I think it's just kind of bringing it, bringing it back to kind of talking about how things are going to, going to work with COVID here. Um, mm-hmm. You have to wonder and maybe be afraid that maybe some of these teams that have nothing to play for um, might get a little lax um, in some of the, uh, the, the procedures. And, you know, wouldn't you t- you talk about like um, the, the most 2020 thing that actually might be um, games getting canceled and the, season getting pushed back at the end because like the Jets players get lax and uh, <laughs> yeah. create an, create an outbreak. So um, I hope that doesn't happen. Um, you know, hope the NFL can, can, I, you know, can kind of continue to, to weather the storm, but I think that is something that, that bear, bears, a little, bears mentioning. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting how that all, all comes down this week seems a little quiet. Um, there's been a couple of, you know, um, close contacts, not any big names, uh, that are seen. So maybe the NFL's kind of got it under wraps again. I'm not sure. They got through the Thanksgiving holiday. Christmas is coming though. Um, and so that's definitely something to watch out for. And, you know, to me, I think it's just kind of crazy when you really break it down that the NFL had so much time to put the schedule together. They didn't play a preseason. Um, and then they built no contingencies in the schedule for this like for, for, for having to cancel games, like why didn't they start the season a week earlier and then have a week for makeup games? You know, why, why didn't they do that? Why didn't they, um, you know, why aren't they more open to the idea of, um, you know, I, I know they don't push, want to push the super, you know, the, the Super Bowl back. I get that. It's a lot of money tied up in there, even if they're not going to have fans there um, or, or many fans there where, you know, whatever they decide to do, I haven't even heard, but um just not willing to take away that week in between or add, I mean, they should have just added a week, but for the playoffs, to be honest, you know, what if, what happens if there's an outbreak during the playoffs, they, they have no contingency plan for this besides a week that they are already saying they don't want to use. Um, and so as much as we give, you know, some praise to the NFL for their contact tracing and everything else that they seem to be doing, it just feels like they could have done more and they should have been more proactive. Even just building in a second bye week, just making it that 18 weeks, allowing those teams to have that more flexibility and not just you know, having an extra bye week. I feel like the NFL needs to trend towards that way anyway, especially in this year when you have so much potential, you know, schedule changes. Just felt like that made a lot of sense for them to, to try to implement and at least test out, you know. Yeah, especially with no, no preseason. Like these guys were yeah. going to be in camps. They were supposed to be playing games at this point. Why didn't you move the season up a week? You, you knew COVID had been happening for six months at the point that the NFL started playing. Like, it just mm-hmm. seems crazy to me. And, and you know, uh, as much as I love uh, the sport of football, uh, you know, and I really don't want to see any games get delayed, but God, it just seems like they could have done a little bit more just because it's, it's getting worse and worse, uh, you know, and, and yeah. this, this last, if you break it down in quarters, the first quarter of the season seemed pretty good. Uh, and it got some, kind of sketchy in the second quarter uh, with mm. Tennessee. And then it kind of got real sketchy in the third quarter. So, mm-hmm. you know, trying in the right direction. Yeah, I'm excited to see what this, you know, when we go back and look at this before our, uh, you know, pr- you know, before the playoffs starts and we're just be like, oh, yeah, you know, <laughs> at the end of the second video, we were just talking about like, okay, everything seems to be calming down. And all of a sudden it's just who knows what the next four weeks are going to be. But let's yeah. – Let's go ahead and finish up for the night. So uh, thanks to our analysts, Chris and Matt. Thank you guys so much for your, for your time. And for everybody out there, thank you guys so much for, for joining us. Please remember to subscribe here and follow us on YouTube and also follow us on Twitter at Hark Adam Sports. Uh, Chris and Matt, why don't you go ahead and share your Twitter handles as well? I'm at, uh, at Matt Hark, M-A-T-T-H-A-R-K. And I'm at the C Adams. And I'm at Mr. Andrew Hare. Thank you all for your time. We'll talk to you guys again soon. Happy holidays, yeah. everyone. Stay See safe. you uh, in 2021. Yeah, well, yeah.